stations. Nate, how was your weekend? Um, about a ten. Yeah, like about a, a three and a half. That's too bad. Hey, Cookie, get the names, please, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's take attendance. Um, Nate, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Uh, ding dong, the witch is dead. The witch is Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many people are going to be playing this game? All right, we're doing the solo thing. I need a name here. Uh, look, they don't have to know them. I don't even know what that is. Okay, you want to do a seven-question game or you want 21? All right, if that's what you want, you're called. 30 seconds. Got a bunch of stuff on your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betty bakes me bread. Stop what you're doing and look down. Nate lost his contact. You what? I don't know. Well, get your gloves on, because I need you to flood out that key light. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're going to lose cash, all right? Ten seconds. Good luck to ya. Nine. Okay, let's get rid of the desktop. Q graphics. Okay, thank you. Let's go to black. Okay, people, let's go stand by. Adios, pendejo. Jack. Okay, you ready to fly? Time for blast off. How about it? Hit me with the camera. Get ready for some fun. It's question number one. Oh, yeah. The category behind this question is Wonder Drugs and Career Day. And we are talking 1000 bucks for this question. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Nitrous oxide is the clown, and sodium pentothal is too. Comedian, judge, pharmacist, or banker. Now the correct answer is <laughs> judge, and that's the truth. Zero. Whoop de do. It's question number two. This one's going to be Slam Me. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. You meet someone who tells you she knows Emma Slan. What do you know about her? She can speak to deaf people. She can't speak English very well. She was involved in a financial scandal. Or she knows someone named Emma Slan. <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. She can speak to deaf people. AMSLAM stands for American Sign Language. All right, come on, hit me. We need a... Ooh, it's question number three. Next up, the Mississippi and Poo Sticks. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. All right, now listen carefully. Winnie the Pooh and Piglet each toss a stick into the Mississippi to see which races downstream first. If the Mississippi flowed in the same direction as the Nile, where would their sticks end up? In New Jersey, in Minnesota, in the Pacific Ocean, or in the Gulf of Mexico? Or in your case, the Goof of Mexico. In case you're curious about the correct answer, Minnesota. Unlike the Mississippi, the Nile flows from south to north. How about it? You're my question for forevermore. The category is 30 Wonderful Flavors, and we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Imagine if Baskin Robbins announced six new flavors called Up, Down, Strange, Charmed, Top, and Bottom. In whose honor could you assume the ice cream was named? Quarks, Prepositions, Snow White's Dwarves, or Stars? Quarks. They come in flavors, like ice cream. What? You telling me your physics teacher didn't teach you about quarks using a frozen dessert analogy? Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, Wes Truck licks nine more. It's time for a Snickerfish Restaurant. 
All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Horse racing and dessert. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. All right, with what cliche does this rhyme? Pat's away. The bookie mumbles. Go for it. Type in your answer. Looks like you get a warm one right from the oven. Honey, careful, that cookie she's hot! <laughs> How about it? Hit me with the category. Gotta be quick! Alright, let's see what we're doing here. TV families and interlopers. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Get your eyes focused on the screen, here we go. The Brady Bunch is to Oliver as the Partridge family is to blank. Tracy, Reuben, Rick. Yes, Ricky, the annoying neighbor kid who briefly joined the show. Now let's see, which instrument did he pretend to play? All right, come on, hit me. We need a... Enter the attack. If you see two words together and they form a match, buzz in. Two thousand dollars will be yours if you're right, but each time you're wrong, two thousand shall be taken away. But be not fooled. Remember the clue. It won't be a match unless it fits this clue. There's no place like. Keep that in mind as you put your finger on your buzzer. Good luck. Saturday night. You want to go driving with me? Sorry, Jim. Sixty seconds. Can somebody get Buzz off the phone? Hey, how's LA? How's the TV show? Actually, they suck. check this out. I got you down. All right, how you doing? Welcome to the Buzz. show. My name's Buzz. 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 What? Don't do that. That's my thing, Buzz. Yeah, right. You're the greatest, Nate. Hey, Thomas. Hello there. Now listen, if you want to play the game, you have to tell me how many people are playing, all right? Okay, you're a single player. Is that right? Okay, why don't you type in your name for me? Hey, you know what? I also need to know if you had plans for a 21-question game or a 7-question game. Yeah, got it. I know all too well. 30 seconds. Okay, you have the letter B as your buzzer. That's B as in who's buying the beer tonight. Copy that, okay. My roommate's uh, <laughs> <he's up. laughs> 
Just give him a little powder. 20 seconds. Hey, we got 20. All right. The question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You with me? Good. Ten seconds. Okay, is everybody set? Very good. Okay, lose the desktop, please. Okay, and go to black. Five. Don't forget to try. Stand by. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, 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 all right, how you doing? Playing by yourself today, that's cool. I'll close my eyes. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Pick your pick, what do you say? Let's have some fun. Here comes question. All right, next up. Lap it up, I'll take it. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, hang tight, put your fingers on your buzzers, here's the question. Suppose you go to a strip club for your weekly lap dance, but instead you end up getting a lapidary dance. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> now the correct answer is... A lapidary is someone who cuts and polishes precious stones. They must have gotten confused by that whole family jewels thing. Go ahead and pick one. Here comes question two. It'll make you feel brand new. The category. The geography of beefcake. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Now, I want you to pay attention to the picture on your screen. Ready? I want you to tell me which of the following best describes this picture. Asia Miners, countries without hats. We are the World Wrestling Federation or Village... We're talking the Village People's Republic of China. And I think when they perform, they all dress as oppressed peasants. Okay, pick a category. Put on your pants for the naked dance. And we call this one a partnership made in hell. And 1,000 bucks is riding on this question. Check this out. The old detective from Barney Miller plus Officer Poncherello equals what? Fish from Barney Miller and Ponch from Chips. That would make a great show. And they could have a streetwise informant named Malt Vinegar. How about it? We need a category. This one's gonna be... Now I ate my ABCs. Won't you come and floss with me? Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. If Post came out with a line of international alphabet cereals, it had one bit of cereal for each letter of the alphabet. Which of these cereals would give you the fullest bowl? Greek alphabet. You got it! Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. No. Too bad you didn't choose this. There are 33 letters in the Cyrillic alphabet used in Russian. Da, and eight essential vitamins and minerals. Come on, we need a category. Number five. The category is when Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie collaborate. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, buzz in and type in your answer when you know the answer. Now, fill in the blank with the best completion to this analogy. USA for Africa is to We Are the World. Go crazy! Band-Aid started it all with Do They Know It's Christmas. Little known fact, at the very same time the song was recorded, Ethiopians were recording a song called, Do They Know We're Muslim? Okay, pick a cat. Uh-oh, press what's with Mime Door. It's time for... Flicker Kiss Don't Strong. Your category for this gibberish question. This round's on the house. We're gonna start out with $5,000 here. 
You got 30 seconds for this, and I'm taking away the prize money a little at a time, so buzz in as soon as you know it. Okay, now tell me, with what person's name does this rhyme? Sent Jin, Sharon... Okay, go for it. I hear Quentin Tarantino's next movie is gonna be a remake of It's Wonderful Life. Peter says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Take your pick. What do you? Jack attack time. When you see two words on the screen that go together, buzz in. If you're right, I give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, I take it away. And remember, not all matches are equal. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. And the last name is... <laughs> I wonder what this one's about. Good luck. Thanks all around. <clears throat> Good show. Uh, let's roll commercial, please. And uh, Cookie, what's going on with these players? Well, what do you know? You made it to the high scoreboard. Of course, no one's ever played the game before, so a three-year-old could have done the same thing. Anyway, when you're done admiring yourself, why don't you tell me if you want to play again, all right? Adios, pendejo. 60 seconds. Raul, you know what to do. Whatever. Raul, honey, no more lip. Just give me the names. I just said whatever. Cook, Cookie, your mic. Hey there, I'm Raul, and congratulations on successfully installing the game. Now, get over yourself and tell me how many people are playing. All right, then. One. Now, type in your name. I'm an auteur here. I don't think you smelled at all. Okay, you want a seven-question game or what? Thank you. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B. That's B as in buttock. One singular buttock. I gotta fix these calls. 20 seconds. Looks like absolutely no sense of style. 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're gonna lose cash. Okay? Okay. 10 seconds. Good luck. No. We're going here. Eight. Lose seven, the desktop. Six. Okay, Five, go to black. Four. Don't forget three. To try even Stand by, people. Pot. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. Hey there, my 
My name's Cookie. You have any questions at all, please feel free to keep them to yourself. Anyway, well, looks like it's just the two of us. Okay, then. It's our party, and no one else is invited. For the enjoyment of everyone during question one, please, no unnecessary talking. Shh, chew on this. No animals were harmed in the making of this question. Thousand bucks if you get it. Fire up those frontal lobes, here's the question. Miss Piggy from The Muppet Show and the pig from the movie Babe have each of these in common except both have fake hair and lashes, both were made by Henson's Creature Shop, both have voices done by the opposite sex, or both are good friends with a frog. In the film, Babe does not have a froggy friend. But he does talk to a duck who breaks into the farmhouse, which was very unrealistic. I mean, ducks are strictly car thieves. Okay, pick it. Cut the red wire! Watch out, it's gonna blow! That was close. Too close. Well, what do we have here? Hey, what smells like fish? How does $2,000 sound? Put it in gear, cause here we go. Suppose that while fly fishing and learning about life, the brothers of a river runs through it, haul in the fish that saved Pittsburgh. What would they be frying up for dinner? A car that uses river water for fuel, a catfish that throws curveballs, a sign of the Zodiac, or a cantankerous New York detective. For the curious, here's the right answer. The fi fish in the fish that saved Pittsburgh refers to the astrological sign Pisces that helps a losing basketball team. And if you ate it, you know what Pisces would run through? The house of Uranus. Get it? Uranus! <laughs> Man, I never get tired of that. Okay. A question so real you can almost touch it! <laughs> Filmed in Spectacular 3D! <laughs> the category? Missing the bus. Two G's if you get this one right. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up. We're going. Let's say that after watching the documentary Brothers Keeper, TV's Shirley Partridge is inspired to do something different with the family bus. What will she most likely do? Drive it across the desert, paint it motley, drive under 50 miles per hour, or raise chickens in it? Brothers Keeper is a documentary about farmers in central New York whose animals live in more luxury than they do, including the chickens living in an old school bus. Maybe the chickens can sing back up along with the, the kids. What? They didn't sing? You mean... I, but they, they looked like they were singing. Tracy seemed like she was so into it back. Oh, man. All right, hit me. Excellent choice. It's time to play Dis or Dat. This Dis or Dat's category name is Silly Names and Riding Tales. All right, I'm going to read off seven nicknames, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's a character in Top Gun, a movie's title, or both. As each name comes up, if it's a Top Gun character, press 1. If it's a movie title, press 2. Press 3 if it's both. And press 4 if you want to skip. For each right answer, you get 500 bucks. And you lose 500 for a wrong answer or one you don't get to. Okay, can I have 30 seconds on the clock, please? Let's dance. Maverick, Top Gun character, movie title, or both. Goose! Gordy! Slider! Hondo! Iceman! Last one, Juice! That's all of them. You only got three right, but look at it this way. At least you're done. Hey, could be worse. Could also be a hell of a lot better, but we're not going to go into that now. Let's move on. I need a category. Piece of crime all the time. Five.
For your enjoyment, the funny side of going to jail. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. Heads up, here it comes. No doubt you've heard of your Miranda rights, but what warning is most likely one of your Carmen Miranda rights? You have the right to tell corny one-liners? Carmen Miranda was a famous 1940s film star from Brazil who wore an enormous tutti-frutti headdress. And when you're talking about the legal system, juries are much more lenient to a defendant who's, who's got a huge tutti-frutti headdress. Trust me on this one. Okay, pick a cat. Password. Yeah, tell him six sent me. Say hello to, not without my paycheck, you get this one right and it's $3,000. And now, the burning question that has tortured America for years. From 1990 to 1995, who made the most made-for-TV movies? Meredith Baxter, about no joke I could make, would be funnier than the fact that she made a movie called My Breast. Should have picked this. <laughs> Valerie did four, Patty and Meredith did 11 apiece, but Melissa made 15. And we're not counting any very special little house on the prairies. Category, please. Time for the attack. When you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. You get it right, you get 2,000 in the bank. Get it wrong, I'm making a withdrawal of 2,000. Just one more thing to remember. Remember the clue. The two words that match have to fit this clue. You're on the air. Now what do you have to say? I'm all ears. Talk to me. Everybody, roll commercials and roll. What are we doing now? Way to go! You got your name on the high scoreboard. It must be because you're very quick and very smart, or because the scoreboard was empty to begin with. Go ahead, live in denial. And if you want to play again, let me know. Sixty seconds. Yeah, well, someone tell the old man that he he can't sleep on my gurney anymore. Raul, hon, we need names. Yes. Okay, I'll be right there. I and hey, welcome. I'm Raul. Congratulations on successfully installing the game. The next thing you know, you'll be hacking into the Pentagon. How many people do we have playing? Did I really need to be here for one player? I mean, I mean, one player. Hey, great. Welcome. Oh, and uh, do you want a seven-question game or a twenty-one? All righty then. Thirty seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. That's B, as in starlight, star bright. Bring him from the dark. All I'm saying, don't be talking trash about Grady. Twenty seconds. Grady was righteous. Twenty seconds. 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 Twenty
Ten seconds. Good luck. Nine. Eight. Seven. All right, we're going. Lose the desktop. Four. Go to black. Three. Ice. Paid for by the National Ice Board. Not affiliated with the National Water Council or the National Association for the Advancement of Water Vapor. Jack TV all by yourself. Well, don't be embarrassed. Laugh track will be provided. This is it. Just you. I hope you appreciate this. All right, let's go. All right, pick a category. Question one is tape before a live studio audience. All right, give it up for Tough on Crime. Who cares? Let's do a magic trick. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Heads up, here it comes. Say Judge Harry Stone from Night Court also presided over divorce court. Given his usual sentence, what would he demand of a spouse who cheated? Pay a $55 fine. Write an apology to the American... Judge Harry Stone's favorite sentence is $55 and time served. <laughs> Which would be great. I mean, you've already done the time, and paying $55, that's nothing compared to what alimony could be. Time to pick a category. Let's take a look at Kenneth Does the Wave. You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. Hey, remember when newsman Dan Rather was assaulted by that guy that kept asking, What's the frequency, Kenneth? Well... Say Dan Rather had referred the assailant to the organization that actually assigns TV frequencies. What might Dan have said? Go ask the BBC, Bartholomew. Try calling the RDA, Spencer. Check with the FCC, Rudolph. Or talk to the AAP, Waylon. FCC, it stands for the Federal Communications Commission, the very kind people responsible for organizing radio and television frequencies. <laughs> I'm not sure what Dan Rather's assailant's name was, but what if it were actually Rudolph? You know, I bet he'd feel really stupid after he called Dan Kenneth. He doesn't even look like a Kenneth. Give me a category. This is question three. Open wide and get ready for fictional characters and fictional high school photos. You get it right, you get 2K. Hey, thanks to our hard-working interns, we have a photo from a character's high school yearbook. You just need to take a look at it for this question. Which character was most likely just introduced at his high school pep rally? Bull from Night Court, Herman from the Munsters. No wonder Herman breaks through the front door of his house during the credits of each show. He's trying to regain the glory of his old varsity high school days. <laughs> and isn't that what we're all trying to do? I mean, look at yourself, trying to capitalize on a time when knowledge about crap on TV actually gave you some sort of status. <laughs> Sad, really. Category, please. Uh-oh, fresh slut tits eyesore. It's time for a gibberish Your gibberish category for today is eating cereal at gunpoint. What do you say to 5,000 bucks to start this gibberish question off? Okay, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this thing, but every second and a half, I'm going to take some of that cash back. Okay, listen up. Buzz in and tell me what famous quote does this rhyme with? Fat's gun stall. Yep, pour the brand. And don't get freaked out by that punctuation. First clue. They're the first words uttered live. Come here, Watson. I want you. No. They're the first words uttered live during the historic first... It's all yours. Type in the answer. Okay, and I'm sure you've always heard it as that's one small step for man instead of for a man. But Mr. Neil Armstrong himself says that he said a man. So, if you want to send anyone a letter, address it to Neil. Throw me a category.
for your enjoyment. Beauty is only screen deep. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. Okay, you know all about the ugly duckling that turns into a swan, right? If the fairy tale, The Ugly Duckling, ended the same way the Ugly Duckling TV movie The Girl Most Likely To does, what would you see? Ugly Duckling has beak enlargement. Ugly Duckling turns into swan, kills ducks. Ugly Duckling ends own pathetic life in pond. Or Ugly Duckling teaches birds value of beauty. Should have picked this one. <laughs> the Girl Most Likely To is the greatest made-for-TV movie about a not-so-attractive girl who becomes beautiful and kicks the living crap out of everyone who ever tormented her. I think there's a very valuable lesson to be learned here. Beautiful people are dangerous and should be taken out with firearms. All right, I need a category. Let's have a big warm welcome for My TV Has the Drip. We're playing for $3,000 this time. Okay, so we all heard about these liquid diets, right? Well, say your doctor puts you on a liquid television diet. Because it was never featured on liquid television, which of these would you not be consuming? Stick Figure Theater, Eon Flux, Beavis and Butthead, or The Red and Stimpy Show? Uh, does this ring a bell? Ren and Stimpy is the only show I mentioned that was never featured on MTV's animated liquid television. I'd be careful though, an all MTV diet seems to cause teen angst. Time to pick a category. Welcome to the Jack Attack. When you see two words on the screen that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, I'll give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're going down 2,000. But don't forget, remember the clue. Not any old word's gonna do it. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. My bestest buddy. No, I wasn't talking to you. You. But good luck anyway. done a better job myself because I wouldn't have played by myself. I would have found something else to do, you know? Now, but seriously, player one, and uh, this isn't easy for me to say. You don't know Jack! Very nice, people. If you ask me, that was worthy of syndication. Okay, get the commercial rolling, and uh, hey, Raul, are we playing again? Congratulations on breaking in the high scoreboard player. Uh, if you want to play again, let me know. I'll be off in the corner here forging your medal. I do not care to discuss the nature of my relationship with Mr. Burrow. All right, yes, it's you. Congratulations on successfully installing the game, you techno geek wizard, you. How many people do we have playing today? Okay, Dandy, one player. What's your name? Yeah. Okay, you want a seven question?
Yeah, Thanks. You're up 30 seconds. Thirty seconds. Blair, when you want to buzz in, hit the letter B. That's B as in bamboozle. I just have to say, you know, things don't shape up for us. Twenty seconds. That a little is not long for this right, world. You know what I mean? Magic. I think you do. Holy mackerel. Okay, uh, listen up. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? It's simple. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Lose the desktop, seven, please. Six. Let's go to five. Black. Okay, Four, we're rolling. Three. Heavenly Critters Pet Cemetery. For those times when your love doesn't fit in a shoebox. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Welcome, welcome. Hi, hello. This is You Don't Know Jack. I'm Cookie, and you're pathetic. Playing by yourself? Go read a book. Oh, all right, whatever. Well, looks like it's just the two of us. Okay, then. It's our party, and no one else is invited. Okay, I'm... Let's see what we got going. Bestiality and dropping balls. $3,000 for this one. All right, let's say you have a big New Year's party with a lot of champagne and things get a little out of hand. If all your pets got pregnant on New Year's Day, which one would go into labor around Labor Day? The donkey, the hippopotamus, the horse, or the sheep? The hippo's gestation period is about eight months, so this hippo will go into labor around Labor Day. But the really amazing thing is, the baby's got your nose. I need a category. And this one is, in the beginning, there was a truck stop diner. This one's worth a grand. Put it in gear, cause here we go. Say in the Garden of Eden were a truck stop diner. Based on the creation story, what dish might you expect to suddenly morph into a... Eve was fashioned from Adam's rib. And Adam and Eve's kids? I think they were fashioned out of Adam's coleslaw. Okay, pick a category. This little number's known as, you think Carrie had it bad. How does $2,000 sound? Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. Say your classmates select you as the person who is most like a small, solid, raised area of the skin that does not contain pus. What have you just been voted? Most pustular, most papular, most poplidial, or most poplar? Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. Uh, a small raised area of the skin that does not contain pus is called a papule. In other words, it might be time to shop for another school. All right, hit me. I got some good news for you. You're about to move into a dis or dad. And this dis or dad question's category is... Wash your filthy mind out. Okay, here's the bit. I'm gonna read off seven four-letter words, and for each one, I want you to tell me whether it's a popular magazine or a brand of soap. If it's a popular magazine's name, press one. If it's a brand of soap, press two. And press four if you wanna skip. $500 for each right answer, and you lose 500 for a wrong answer or one you don't get to. All right, I'll start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Time, magazine or soap? Life. Lava. Self. Gov. Zest. Last one. That's all she... Seven out of seven. Let's throw that into your total. 
Feel good? I hope so, cuz we still got more jack. Category, please. And I believe this one's called, If Penicillin Doesn't Work, Get the Leeches. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Let's see how you handle this one. Imagine the hospital drama ER were set during Europe's 14th century Black Death. Because it wasn't a commonly accepted remedy, which of these episodes would you not see? A cannon being fired in the hospital, doctors and patients engaging in sex orgies, Carol arranging dead animals around the ER, or Doug bathing a child in urine. Um, no. Bet you wish you'd pick this. Ramp and sex was not popularly believed to cure the plague. Although, it is my favorite cure for a headache. Okay, pick a category. Here we have reasons not to buy a watch from the guy in a raincoat. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Heads up, here it comes. If the watches in artist Salvador Dali's persistence of memory were to be promoted in a commercial, what tagline would be most appropriate? Takes a punching and keeps on munching, takes a belting and keeps on melting, takes a cleaning and... The clocks in Dali's persistence of memory all appear to be melting. To which I say, hey, Dolly, keep your swatch away from the heater. Okay, I need a category. All rise, the attack is now in session. If you see two words that go together on the screen, buzz in and you've got 2,000 bucks. Hit your buzzer when they don't go together. You can kiss 2,000 bucks goodbye. Here's the fun part. Remember the clue. The words only match if they fit this clue. Who is the band coming down your block? Not to mention the jack attack coming into your living room. Good luck. Congratulations, my friend. You made it through an entire game by yourself and you came out on top. Not many people can say that, but I know plenty of people who can say... You don't know, Jack! That's a wrap, folks. Give yourselves a little pat on the back. And Raul, are we doing another one of these? All the kids used to be mean to me at school because I... Hey, isn't it nice to know that you fill a void in someone's life, even if it's just an empty slot on a scoreboard? If you'd like to play again, just uh, give me the word. Hello, and welcome to the ride. I see you're into the hear no evil, see no evil philosophy of life. That should serve you very well down on the censorship floor. How many of you are there?
One player? Great. I'll keep you company. How many questions would you like to play? Seven? Thirteen? Okay. Great. I need you to type in your name now. Thank you very much. As you know, your buzzer is the key with the B on it. And now, it's time for the best part of the ride. Remember, you're always getting closer to the bottom. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride is sponsored by the Backwards Christian Lyrics. Coalition. We'll find a satanic reference in your children's music, whether it's there or not. And now, here's the host, delicious as his name, Cookie! Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Just a word of warning, I'm not going to censor myself here, so you might want to cover your own eyes and ears, okay? <laughs> All right, it's time to learn the seven naughty words, because we're taking on censorship. <laughs> Think we can work with that, and here's your category. Censorship. More like censorship. You ready? Let's go. If today's censors had the same... 41, 42, how does she do that? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's disgusting. Don't look. The original censors took census, which means they counted things, and they took a break to read the articles. Now select the highest value and see if you hit the jackpot. Holy something! Here's your category. Keep your censorship off my private parts. You know, political correctness has gotten way out of hand. There's even a human muscle named the PC muscle. If you're having problems with your PC muscle, what's the best PC... Urinarily challenged. Wow, looks like you're quite the cunning linguist. The PC muscle, or the pubococcygeal muscle, controls the flow of urine from the bladder and contributes to greater sexual pleasure in women, without offending anyone at all. Hey, buzz into selective value. All right, that's all right. Okay, here's your category. Censorship and hardwood. Okay, play ball. If you tie a blue ribbon... The Blue Ribbon Campaign is for free speech online. You should consider publishing photos of your oak tree on your homepage, because none of the online freaks will ever go outside to see it. Okay, hit your buzzer and try to snap. Ah, you blew it. Here's your category. I'll wash your thesaurus out with soap. Here we go. Which of these is not a dirty... A bloated means washed clean. No, it's not really dirty. Unless you say something is f***ing a bloated. Alright, it's time to choose the value of the question. Let's do it. Oh, nice picking. Oh, get out of here! It's time for a dis or dat question. The category for this dis or dad is... I see no evil, but I can smell it a mile away. Okay, I'm gonna list off seven people, and for each one, I want you to tell me if they're... Someone who sees no evil, someone who hears no evil, or someone who neither sees nor hears evil. As each one comes up, if it's someone who just sees no evil, press 1. If it's someone who just hears no evil, press 2. If it's both, press 3. If you're not sure, press 4. You're gonna get some money for each right answer, and you lose cash for a wrong answer or any you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. When the wire fills up, you're out of time. And here we go. Stacy! Marley! Goodness gracious, dis, dat, whatever, you had it down. Take a look at your score. 
All right, there it is. Let's keep moving. The category is... Tipper Gore. Okay, you with me? This one's worth 4,508 bucks. Here we go. Say Tipper Gore treats her husband... 750? Hmm. Yep, that, that'd be the customary 15% tip. Which leaves her and Al just enough money to buy a few two live crew albums to burn when they get home. Hit your buzzer to choose the value of the next question. This one's called... I understand moral, but what's turpitude? You know that song by Ice-T called Cop... C hey, lady, you, you can't come in here. What are you... Hey, don't put... What, what are you... Ow! I'm covered in stickers. Here, look at this. Ow, my short hairs. <clears throat> Parental advisory. Good Tipper Gore and the Parents Music Resource Center campaign for the little warning labels on albums. And I have half a mind to take this sticker and shove it up the ass of those mother goody goody no good have nothing better to do head moral majority monkey suckers with a frozen boot. Now there's an explicit warning. Oh, coming up. You have the right to remain silent and minty. Let's get go. What issue would scopes? The original Scopes Monkey Trial took place when enlightened Tennesseans jailed biology teacher John Scopes for teaching evolution. Apparently creationists also believe that fresh breath is an act of God. Okay, okay give it up for... My fellow congressmen, try the veal! Here's the question. Considering the specific issue... It all started when a congressman from South Carolina stood up and proclaimed, Take his freedom, please! Until they were deemed unconstitutional, gag rules in the House of Representatives prevented members from considering anti-slavery petitions. Could I interest you in some roadkill? Okay, let me explain how this game works. I'm going to show you various pairs of things that are somehow related. And you're going to see a series of items that may or may not connect the pair. Buzz in if you think an item correctly joins the pair. There's a thousand bucks in it for you if you're right, but do choose wisely. You're going to lose a grand every time you're wrong. And at the end, there's going to be a bonus question worth some bonus cash. Pay attention to all the correct answers, and you might have a shot at the bonus. Is that clear? Good. Let's hit it. An essay in Flaker Plastic Bag. What's the common link between these two? Washington State and Flanky Plank Packer. the diamonds and plank miner's daughter. Cars use it and beans cause it. Tampa NHL team and go grease plank. Depressed Michigan City and skin plank equals miser. Coordinate and blank box cars. All right, let's nab that bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all fire starting? With That's that count. Everything you need to burn a bunch of bucks. That's what your current score looks like. Let's keep going. All right. I like to call this category Comstocks and Bondage. Get your buzzer finger ready. Here we go. If you don't put much stock in the... I know, you only read them for the articles. 
Also known as the Federal Anti-Obscenity Act, the Comstock law bans the mailing of indecent materials. You know, it was, uh, it was just too distracting for the postal carriers. Hey, buzz into selective value. Here's your category. Low prices every day. And now the question. Where is Walmart head? Bentonville, Arkansas. Yep, that'd be Bentonville, all right. Right there in Arkansas. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Sensory overload. Remember, the match has to follow the clue. Good luck. Very stiff competition! In other news, three out of five celebrities agree that war is bad. Learn more tonight. I don't know how we're going to afford Dad's funeral and serve finger sandwiches afterwards. We were able to pay for the casket and the headstone. Cookie, you have any questions at all, please feel free to keep them to yourself. Anyway, hey, all by yourself today? Okay, let's see if you can fill up that seat next to you with some cash. Let's rock. Category, please.
Open wide and get ready for Smells Like Preteen Spirit. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. If Play-Doh were still used for its original purpose, what store would most likely sell it? Fannie Mae, Victoria's Secret, The Home Depot, or Tower Records? Okay, once you start thinking Play-Doh is sexy, it's all over. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. <laughs> Play-Doh was originally made to clean wallpaper, so you probably see it at Home Depot. Kind of makes you feel even weirder about eating this stuff, doesn't it? Okay, I need a category. Here we have fill her up with milk bones, please. And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. Say Greyhound opens a branch in Italy. Considering the difference between traditional Greyhounds and Italian Greyhounds, what would be the problem with Italian Greyhound buses? They would only go up to about 10 miles per hour. Long, wiry hair would block the driver's view. They would take up all three highway lanes. Or they could only accept midget passengers. Sure, unless you dangle a plastic rabbit in front of them. Let's take a look at the right answer. Ah! Ita Italian greyhounds are miniature versions of the traditional greyhound dogs. But get a male greyhound together with a female and you get one of those British double-decker buses. I need a category. Well, looks like this category is caught between two rocks in a straight place. How does $2,000 sound? She's pissed. He's pissed. We're pissed. pissed. So pissed about, about a question. We're pissed about... Okay, I've got a pissed about a question letter, and this particular complaint is from one Betsy L. And Betsy writes, On the April Fool's episode, the question asked what were the two places between the Bering Strait? I hit Alaska and Russia, but the game said I was wrong and that Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope were the right answers. <laughs> Do you want parents, teachers, and right-wing politicians saying the staff writers at You Don't Know Jack really don't know Jack? Well, we certainly wouldn't want that, Betsy, but... What would parents, teachers, and right-wing politicians probably say to Betsy Allen in response to her letter? No, Betsy, you don't know Jack. Sorry, Betsy, here's a refund. April Fools! Or they would ignore her. Right-wing politicians ignore an educational issue? No. Here's what you should have picked. As you noted yourself, Betsy, it was the April Fool's episode. You know, right is wrong, left is right, the world is wacky and anything's possible. Guess we fooled you. But you know what, Betsy, next time we'll just stick to telling you your shoelaces are untied. All right, hit me. You chose wisely, my friend. You just got your hands on a diss or dash. The category for this diss or dat question is meaty, beady, green, and grouchy. Now I'm gonna read off a list of seven things, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's an album by The Who or a line from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. As each one comes up, if it's an album by the British rock group The Who, press one. If it's a line from Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, press two. And if you want to skip one, press four. I'll give you 500 bucks for each right answer, and 500 will be taken away if you get it wrong or don't get to it. All right, let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. The Who Sell Out, Who Album or Grinch? Just north of Whoville. Cindy Lou Who. Who's better, who's best? Little Who Stockings. Who by Numbers. One more, Rare Who Roast Beast. That's all. She wrote, six out of seven. Good day at the plate, batter. Let's check out your new average. Okay, let's roll. Okay, pick a category. Numero cinco, and you don't know Jack. 
Let's see what we got going. B I N G E. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If you chow down the following in one sitting, which would provide your recommended daily allowance of two thousand calories? Two Big Macs, a pint of Ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey, forty Snackwell's Devil's Food Cookie Cakes, or an entire ten ounce bag of baked Lay's. Well, this is gonna be a buzzkill. For the curious, here's the right answer. Devil's Food Snack Wells are 50 calories a pop, so scarf down 40 and you're set for the day. But if you have that many Snack Wells, that scary woman from the commercials will start stalking you instead of the cookie man. Okay, I need a category. Well, what do we have here? I must be in the last row. $1,000 at stake on this one. All right, you've seen those rectangular compacts of birth control pills, right? In a 28-day pack, there are four rows of pills, one for each week of the month, and the fourth row is usually a different color. Well, say you go to a concert and the seating is arranged like a 28-day pill compact. What would the difference? The fourth week of pills taken during the week of your period are placebos. They're just there so you don't get out of the habit of taking them. And please, don't take your sugar pills during the concert. The cellophane disturbs everyone around you. I need a category. You're about to embark on the attack. Hit your buzzer when you see two words on the screen that match. Two thousand bucks if you're right, two thousand off if you're wrong. It's not so hard as long as you remember this. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. Meet the buttocks. Hey, my buttocks are fine. In fact, they're very fine. It's just this damn goiter on my neck. Anyway. So, that's right, you did so-so. And here's a little something to keep in mind next time. You don't know Jack! Hey, look who's top dog, number one at the Animal Pound. High what? score, hey, how about that? If you want to play again, or if you'd rather just get in line for euthanasia, yep. let me know. Taste the sweet fruit of forbidden desire on Old Shoe Diaries tonight. Scissors, don't run through the house with them. Hey there, I'm Sandy. Kudos to you for successfully installing the game. I'm impressed, but uh, I don't want to tax you too much, so I'll start with an easy question. How many people are going to be playing the game? Playing alone, huh? Okay, can you give me your name? Okay, do me a big favor and pick which episode you want to play. Thirty seconds. 
Okay, you're gonna buzz in on the letter B. That's B as in bottle blonde. 20 seconds. All right, listen up, take notes. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. Got that? See you on the flip side. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hello there. Welcome to our pets episode. You know, as a special treat, I was going to bring my dog, Doodles, to the studio. The only problem is, a couple of years back, my mom took little Doodles to a special farm where puppies can run around free and play with all the other puppies. Anyway, she lost the address, which is you know, kind of a drag. <laughs> oh, well. All right, pick a category. The category? Don Corleone doesn't like Don Johnson. You get it right, you get 2K. Yes, always time for a little 80s trivia, wouldn't you agree? So think back to the days of pastel suits and windblown hair, because we're talking Miami Vice on this one. Imagine one of Sonny Crockett's enemies kills Crockett's pet and then sends it to him. What will Sonny most likely receive in the mail? Some tortoise shell glasses, a feather boa, a pair of alligator shoes, or mink coat. Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? about your studs, huh? Sonny Crockett had a pet alligator. Oh, Tubbs, my alley wally gator is dead. They killed my alley wally. <laughs> but hey, uh, the shoes do go really well with this blazer. Category, please. We're calling this one, Walk Softly and Carry a Big Squeaky Toy. 2,000 bucks for correct answer. And now, your question. If your dog is being housebroken on Roger Ebert's film reviews, to what newspaper do you subscribe? The Chicago Sun-Times, the New York... Oh, TV may have made him famous, but I've always known my close personal friend Roger Ebert as a writer for the Chicago Sun-Times. So now, if you're training your dog with his columns, does that make him a yellow journalist? Give me a category. All right, give it up for who left Rusty out in the rain again. How does $2,000 sound? All right, give me your best shot. If you were to breed Rin Tin Tin with a metallic canine, what would be the best name for the alloy puppy? Rin Steel Steel, Rin Brass Brass, Rin Pewter Pewter, or Rin Aluminum Aluminum? Here's the one you didn't pick. Pewter is a mix of tin and other metals, like copper or lead. Here, Rin Pewter Pewter, come on, boy! Look, I said, get the hell over here! All right, I'm getting the magnet. Throw me a category. For your viewing pleasure, spaniels with feathered hair. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. She's pissed! He's we're pissed about This here pissed about a question letter is from Mandy R. in Rockaway, New Jersey. Rock on, Mandy. Anyway, she'd like to shed some light on one of our questions. There is a question that asks what 1970s song does not talk about someone dying. Your answer is the song Mandy. In fact, that song was written about the feelings Barry Manilow had when he put his dog to sleep. I thought I would bring it to your attention. Well, thanks a lot, Mandy. I'm surprised Barry never mentioned it. 
us being such close personal friends and all. Anyway, say just for a minute, Mandy's story about the dog being put to sleep is true. If Barry Manilow had been less cryptic in his lyrics, what would he have sung after you came and you gave without taking? But I anesthetized you, oh Mandy. But I cauterized you, oh Mandy. But I emasculated you, oh Mandy. Putting your dog to sleep is the soft-hearted term. Euthanizing is the technical term. Killing is the truth. <laughs> so what, now I'm supposed to feel sorry for Barry? Huh? Is that it? Yeah, well, not me. He didn't have to have his dog put down. He could have had him go to the puppy farm where my doodles went. They play all day there and get ice cream. All right, I need a category. Well, good for you. You just picked a when did happen. All right, I'm going to show you an event like this. Man first walks on the moon. Then I'm going to list off seven other events like this one. All you got to do for each one is tell me whether it happened before or after man first walked on the moon or if it never happened at all. Buzz in when the correct answer is lit, you'll get $1,000. But be careful, if you buzz in when the incorrect answer is lit, you lose 1000 each time you're wrong. We all set? Okay. The name of this when did happen is, they shoot trivia players, don't they? Okay, now what would a pet episode be without a friendly, cheerful reminder that your cute little bundle of fur will one day kick the bucket? So, the main point for this one is, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery hits the bookshelves. So, tell me, did this sad event happen before Pet Cemetery hit bookstores, after that, or did it never happen at all? Okay, let's take a look at the damage. Well, that was kind of a lukewarm showing. Let's see what that does to your score. Okay, now, where were we? Time to pick a category. Let's have a big warm welcome for Math Makes My Cat Puke. You get this one right, you get 3,000 greenbacks. Flex those fingers, here it comes. If your cat hawks up a hairball that is a perfect sphere, how do you determine the area of the hairball? Multiply half its length by its height, multiply the square... Here's Rongi. The correct answer is... Last time I checked, you get the area of a sphere by multiplying the diameter squared by pi. Okay, Fluffy, now do a dodecahedron. <laughs> All right, pick a category. <laughs> this category is known as the vet has a side job at Bo Ricks. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Let's see how you handle this one. If your pet mullet gets a mullet hairstyle, what will you have? A bird with a thin braided tail in back, a fish with short hair on top, long in the back, a lizard with hair that's short all over, or a monkey with bangs falling over its eyes. <laughs> Lil Flipper is going to get his hair cut short on the top and long in the back, just like a hockey player. Hey, and you can make it poop up with just a little bit of salmon mousse. Throw me a category. May I introduce Portrait of the Artist as a Young Puppy? You get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Pencils ready, let's do it. If your pet makes pet sounds, which of these will happen? Pet Sounds is a very famous Beach Boys album. Hey, it could happen. My dog sounds like Bob Dylan. Category, please. It's time for a question again. Let's take a look at fun with fish. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Okay, free your mind. 
If the lead guitarist of the band Fish had a dorsal fin, what would it help him do? Remain upright while jamming, release pheromones to the groupies, amplify the sound of his solos, or aid in the digestion of the funk. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. Dorsal fins help a fish stay upright while swimming. Of course, if you're the only one who sees the dorsal fin growing out of fish's lead guitarist, well, you may want to wrap yourself in a blanket and head back to the tent, dude. Give me a category. The category is nine lives are no good if they're all sterile. 4K coming your way for a right answer. Got your buzzer fingers ready? Well, now, how about the ones that type? Because this one's a fill-in-the-blank. If your vengeful pet were to neuter the game show host who ends all of his shows... All right, type the... Mr. Bob Barker is the one who ends every episode of The Price is Right by reminding people to have their pets spayed and or neutered. Of course, your pet doesn't really have to seek its revenge through surgery. No, one well-placed bite ought to teach Bob a lesson. Time to pick a category. Well, look what you just happened upon, my little friend. You got yourself a this or that. And this this or that question's category is... Tastes just like chicken feed. Hey, I'm gonna name off seven food products, okay? And for each one, you need to tell me if it's food for a human or food for just a cat or a dog. If it's a product meant for you and me, press one. If it's meant for Fluffy or Fido, press two. And hit four if you want to skip. I'll give you $1,000 for a right answer, and you lose 1000 for each one you get wrong or you don't get to. Okay, you got 30 seconds. You ready? And we're off. Kibbles and bits, human food or pet? Snossages. Total. Gaines Burgers. Basic Four. Kitten Caboodle. Arena. Let's go to the one you skipped. Snossages. That's it. Hey, you got two of them right, and you kept all the colors in the lines, too. Well done. Hey, live and learn, huh? You just need to learn a bit more, that's all. Okay, let's move on. All right, I need a category. Let's see what we got going. Beauty and the bestiality. If you know this one, you're getting 4,000 bucks. Put it in gear, because here we go. If you rent a porn movie starring exotic Russian blue, Chartreux, and Havana Brown, what would the film's title most likely be? Doggy style, Randy Rabbits, Cats in Heat, or Hung, like... Doggy style, huh? Okay, bare your fangs and flatten your ears, because I'm taking some cash. <laughs> For the curious, here's the right answer. <laughs> Exotic, Russian blue, Chartreux, and Havana brown are all breeds of cats? Oh, you sick freak! Well, what are you gonna do if you can't get your own diminutive feline animal? Throw me a category. Shake hands with musician free to good home. I'll give you 4,000 clams for this bad boy. Hey, do you remember back when rockabilly was cool for a couple of weeks? No, no, not the first time during the 50s or the third time a couple of years ago. I'm talking about the second time back in the 80s when the stray cats were all the rage. Well, in which of these bands did a stray member of the stray cats find a home? Dave Matthews Band, Ben Folds 5, the Brian Setzer Orchestra, or Big Bad Voodoo Daddy? My close personal friend Brian Setzer, ex-frontman of the Stray Cats. <laughs> and on his behalf, I'd like to say that all the rumors about neutering are not true. That lovely voice of his is au naturel. 
category, please. And our special guest tonight, Peter Piper picked a pet in Mr. Peebles' pet store. How does $4,000 grab you? Ready? Catch this. If you bought a guinea pig for a guinea while in Guinea, what did you buy? A marsupial for a ball in South America. A pig for a sack in the South Pacific. A guinea pig is a rodent, a guinea is a coin, and guinea is in Africa. And anybody who would go to Africa and pay with English gold for a cheap-ass rodent indigenous to South America is a weenie. Welcome to the Jack Attack. When you see two words on the screen that match, hit your buzzer. If you're right, I'll give you 2,000 bucks. If you're wrong, you're going down 2,000. But don't forget, remember the clue. Not any old word's gonna do it. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. There's a little pet in everything. So don't be afraid if I start humping your leg. Good luck. Nothing to write home about, but that's too shabby. Let's see your score. That's the game. Wow, that was an exciting game. That was a real thrill. You were the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left, now look to your right, now repeat after me. Numero uno on the high scoreboard. Don't you kind of wish you could take your monitor around with you everywhere? Well, I suppose this is just more of a private victory. Give me the 411 on if you want to play again. Hey, if you think this episode is a keeper, hit F and save it on your favorites list. I hear they're even more delicious the next day. But he refused to give up. He blocked out all the naysayers and kept his faith in God. And for this, he was rewarded. His patience led to a business twice as big as before, a family twice as loving, and his health. It's the story you haven't read. Patient plaything. Job. Tomorrow on B. True Biblical Story. Dude! I want to go to that. Welcome to the fifth dementia. I said hello and welcome to the fifth dementia. Alright, all right, much better. Anyway, I'm Gerard. I'm you through a little game. I'd like to a huddle. Watch that the Cyrus may heavy inside of a vacuum cleaner and the crew settled down a little bit with your special effect. Alright, okay, oh, there we go. Anyway, I'm Gerard. I'm glad you can install the game. Uh-huh, what's it gonna be? Network or home play, home slice? Alright then, how many people were you thinking? You're home alone, isn't that a little scary? You know, sort of like scream or something? You wanna go online? Alright, tell me my friend, what do the people call you? Wow, such surgical precision. I didn't think you'd ever get your name right. 
Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Brannigan, Laura. Okay, this is how things work. To answer a question, buzz in, then pick one, two, three, or four if it's multiple choice, or type in your answer if you need to fill in the blank. Now, you're liable to see some other strange things along the way. It's weird, but someone will be there to walk you through. Alright, next stop, fifth dementia. No panhandling radio player hogging seats when there's old people, okay? where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, welcome to the show. Glad you could be here. But I gotta warn you, I may be going into labor any second. You see, I'm pregnant with Bigfoot's love child. That's right, shocking secrets revealed, the tabloid episode. Hi there, welcome. How you doing? Good to see ya. Cause it's not like I have any friends. Are there any questions? Too bad, time to begin. Hit the buzzer for the value on this one. Here's what we're looking at. $4,000. Well, what do we have here? He's only mostly dead. All right, tuck it in. We're moving. Where was the first Elvis sighting? Memphis, Tennessee, Lexington, Kentucky, Birmingham, Alabama, or East Tupelo, Mississippi? Elvis has entered the building. The king was born in East Tupelo, Mississippi. He died sometime in early 96 when the alien spacecraft that abducted him crashed into the Eiffel Tower. Value time. Let's see how much you can win this time. $3,000. Coming at you. Urban Legends of the Prairie. Okay, free your mind. Suppose you have to take your gerbil to the emergency room because he stuck something up his butt. Which of these would you tie? German, Canadian, or Mongolian? The most commonly kept household gerbil is your Mongolian gerbil. Although that story is not nearly as embarrassing as the hamster who had to have his stomach pumped because, <laughs> well, never mind. Choose an amount. Let's see what this one comes to. 3,750 bucks. Well, if it isn't my old friend, show me the Mooney. Okay, let's rock. Because he accepted money from the Moonies, what former president would you expect to repay the favor by shaving his head and bothering people at airports? George Bush, Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, or Gerald Ford? Here's a good answer. If you believe everything you read in the Washington Post, Bush received at least a hundred grand from the Reverend Moon. Read my lips. Must give money to Moonies. Must not resist. I am the walrus. Cuckoo ka Go ahead and choose a value. Okay then, what do you think about this? 250. You feel like smashing a couple of bugs? It's time to bug out. Okay, listen up. This is really easy. All you have to do is buzz in to squash the bugs that don't belong. For example, if the clue is red things, 
just hit your buzzer on the bug that doesn't belong, which in this case is the thing that is not red. If you're wrong, I'm going to have to take away some cash. If you're right, well, then I'll give you some cash. And you'll be working up to a final round value of 250. Okay, the dirt's about to fly, so let's go. Astrological symbols, buzz in when you see one that isn't. <laughs> Truths about Richard Gere. One Academy Awards. Procedures. Star Trek aliens. Elizabeth Taylor, ex husbands. Tabloids, buzz in when you see one that's just made up. Shall we move along here? Buzz in for the value. Here's your total value for this one. $1,000. The category is quit playing with your balls. Hey, you think getting caught showing your Mooney in public is embarrassing? Check this out. If a tabloid photographer caught Marco Mira scratching his balls, what type of balls would they most likely be? Soccer balls, tennis balls, basketballs, or golf balls? Here's the one the winners pick. He's a golfer. See, there's your difference right there. Tiger Woods, he never scratches his golf balls. Unless they're really itchy. Pick any amount. Well, I'll be gosh darn. $4,000. Well, look what I found. Body and spud of Christ. All right, so you know how every once in a while a potato pops up somewhere that looks like Jesus? Yeah, that's right. Well, imagine you take the Jesus potato and dice it, mix in some onion and parsley and cook it in bacon drippings. What delicious dish have you prepared? Jesus hash browns, Jesus french fries, Jesus potato au gratin, or scallop Je I do this out of love. What, you never ate breakfast before? Blessed are the starchy, for they are rich in potassium. Time to choose a value. Let's see what the value of this question is. 3750 bucks. All right, give it up for hung like an elephant. Brace yourself, this might sting a little. If Hannibal had tried to cross the Alps on the back of the elephant man, where would his long journey have begun? London, Paris, Berlin, or Moscow? You should have bought a vowel. You are not an animal. At least not a very bright one. 
Joseph Merrick, a.k.a. the Elephant Man, was from England. You probably noticed he had bad teeth. Ticket him out! Yeah, now this could certainly help out. $12,000. Well, sweet mercy, guess what this is? It's time for... <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you a gibberish phrase. When you know what it rhymes with, buzz in. The quicker you move, the more cash you can make. The opening value for this one is $12,000. All right, have a listen to this and tell me what newsworthy phrase it rhymes with. Oh, and you can ignore all that punctuation, okay? Hex drug, hex drug, bleed paw. All right, type the answer and hit return. Now, does anybody really bother to read the newspaper anymore? I mean, I get all of my information off of the E! Entertainment Network. Yeah. Why, just the other day I heard that the U.S. Senate is wild on Rio. Buzz in for the amount. Here's what you can win on this one. 2,250 smackers. May I introduce... Pop goes the bubble. Open wide. Say the boy in the plastic bubble wins the lottery. If he upgrades to a bubble made of white gold, what will be insulating him from the rest of the world? Gold and tin, gold and silver. <laughs> white gold is made up of gold and nickel. I'll tell you what, he'd be even richer if he had a nickel for every time somebody played the Oh no, I'm falling on your bubble while holding scissors trick. Go ahead and grab an amount. The total amount for this one is $1,000. I'm calling this one double X isn't as good as triple X. Heads up, here it comes. What could follow a tabloid headline that begins Extreme Xenotransplantation? John Wayne Bobbitt gets pig penis. Lucy Lawless pregnant by lesbian lover. Kathy Lee going to jail? Or Tanya Harding moves objects with mind? Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Xenotransplantation is when you transplant organs from one animal to John Wayne Bobbitt, or any other animal. I'll tell you, it gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, pork, the other white meat. <laughs> oh man, poor guy. He's never going to live that down, is he? Get a value. All right, keep an eye on that value, my friend. You're about to take on a dissertat. The category for this dissertat question is Madonna spotted with Sasquatch. Okay, I'll read off seven statements and you tell me whether each one is an accepted truth about Sean Penn, a generally accepted belief about Bigfoot, or both. As each one comes up, if it's true about Sean Penn, press one. If it's true about Bigfoot, press two. Press 3 if it's both, and if you want to skip one, press 4. You're going to earn money for each correct answer, and you lose some cash for each one you get wrong or don't get to. All right, give me 30 seconds on the clock. It's showtime. Attack journalist with a rock, Sean Penn. Big Often seen in British Columbia. Considered a bipedal hominid. Captured in California in 1987. Caught on film by Malik. First spotted in 1960. One more. Sometimes goes by Yeti. That's all seven. All right, so you dropped a couple. I've seen worse. Let's look at your score. Wow, that was really exciting. Grab a value. The reward for this question is 3,500 bucks. Allow me to introduce, in search of, Robert Stack's grammar. Let's do it. 
What's an unsolved mystery? A redundant title for a TV show, an oxymoronic title for a TV show, an anachronistic title for a TV show, or a hyperbolic title for a TV show. What do you say we check out the right answer? A redundancy means saying the same thing twice. By definition, a mystery is unsolved. I mean, come on, once it's solved, it ain't a mystery. Which is precisely why they're changing the name of the show to Solved Mysteries. The new show is going to focus on people who thought they lost their car keys, but then found them in their pants pocket. Time to pick a value. This question comes out to around two grand. For your enjoyment, life's the armpits. Think fast. Here it comes. Since he, she was the first American to have a widely publicized sex change, who actually needs a deal? Score it. As a precautionary measure just before the surgery, doctors asked George to raise his hand, raise his hand, if he was sure. Value. The value of this question comes to two grand. This one's called Who Married Tony Randall? One question coming right up. Who married Tony Randall? His childhood nanny, Jack Klugman, the former Princess of Monaco, or a woman 50 years younger than it? God bless his wrinkled soul. In 1995, Tony Randall somehow married a woman 50 years his junior. Boy, I was a big fan of Paul McCartney when he used to be back in the Beatles. You mean he was in a band before Wing? <laughs> then grab hold of something well you've made it to the jack attack pay close attention to the items on the screen buzz in when you see two that match if you're right you make money if you're wrong you lose money and try not to forget remember the clue it has to be a match that fits this clue Yellow journalism is so pissy. So, see this morning's headlines? Yeah. Good luck. So I hope it made you stronger. Let's see if it killed your final score. There it is. Way to go, my friend. Like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer, will ya? Because... Now, the St. Joseph's Historically Inaccurate Boys Choir. Mm. Oh, Genghis Khan was a merry old man, and a very hairy man was he.
Avast there! The whole of me wretched life, I've been a-searching for a fabled treasure. A prize whose riches would make even the saltiest of seamen weak in the knee. Tis true, thousands of priceless questions been conceived o'er the years. Enjoyed by all, from the kingliest of blue stockings to the lowest of lovers. But a rare cargo of the most treasured trivia trinkets was forever lost in the briny deep one stormful night in the tempestuous sea, Era. Then, one fateful day, I founded myself washed ashore on a godforsaken dune somewheres up the Isle of Tortuga. Marooned it. Twas at that moment that I seen it, jutting out of the sand like a breaching mermaid showing off her nipperkins. The fabled treasure chest. As I hoisted the lid, I knew me voyage was over. For I had finally unearthed Jack Gold. <laughs> <laughs> but this, me hearties, beware me tail, take a devilish turn. Discovering the gold unleashed upon meself a curse so hellish that even the mighty Kraken would cower in its propinquity. Whilst someday I hopes to be freed from this torturesome limbo, I sit here before you. For lo, these everlasting years hewn in the living rock of this accursed trivia nightmare, performing without end the most wretched of unholy tasks. There, uh, ahoy there. Look, before you tell me the number of players and all that, I be needing your help. See, I be trapped in this hellish game, and it be up to ye to free me from me eternal damnation. Now ye must try to amass the largest fortune possible to free me from me doom. But remember, answer carefully, for me fate, it be in your hands. There it go! Okay, okay, I'll get back to me job. Oh, please don't zap me. Oh. Uh, how many be playing now? Describe your name with Jan Computer and I'd be forever excellent. Hey, you buzz in with the letter B, as in... Ow! Damn hook. Arr, now here's how things they are going to work. Now, you use your buzzer to buzz in and then hit a one, two, three, or four if it's a multiple choice question, or you start typing with your hook on your hand if it's a fill in the blank. Pretty easy, eh? Er, time to haul anchor. So go off and find your fortunes, and never forget Squawky and the captain. <laughs> My name is Schmitty. Hey, could you do me a favor and smile real pretty? Great. That goes straight to my website. Okay, put down the instruction manual. It's time to get started. So, what's it going to be? This category is Want to See Stars? Try Reentry. And you pocket 4000 bucks if you get this one right. All right, tuck it in. We're moving. Suppose Cosmopolitan Magazine offered sexy, sexy advice about using a Cosmodrome. What would be the best sexy, sexy teaser for the cover? Ignite his libido with one little capsule. Make him lift off on the launch pad. Learn to translate his pillow talk. Or does his heavenly body measure up? Why didn't you pick this one? A Cosmodrome is where a Cosmo girl would send a cosmonaut into the cosmos. It's a Russian launching pad. The launch can sometimes be a little bit of work, though, what with all that vodka and the old um, fuel line, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Tell me which category you want. Here. 
here we have batter up get it right i'm handing over four thousand bucks so you've heard how if guys need to uh, control themselves during the sex act they ought to think about baseball well because the players were on strike in which year would a guy not have been able to think about <laughs> that's the way you do it because of the 1994 baseball strike, the season ended early, just like the sex. Time to choose a category. Well, look what I found. The royal jewels on display. Let's go $2,000 for this one. Put it in gear, because here we go. If you walked in on Prince Charles and his sons while they were relieving themselves in a men's room, what would be the least accurate thing to say? My, that sure is Harry. Whoa, nice Willy. Aw, it's little Peter. He's got a Willy and a Harry, but Prince Charles definitely has no Peter. And luckily, he doesn't have a son named Richard. Time to select a category. Let's take a look at, hi, I'm Ben, Dover. This one's worth 4,000 bucks. Ready? Good, we're starting. If the British were to brush their teeth with the same ingredient that makes the white cliffs of Dover so white, what would be the secret of their dazzling smiles? Chalk, talc, baking soda, or ice? White Glyphs of Dover, now in refreshing spearmint. <laughs> you'll be brushing with chalk, which you'll find in the medicine cabinet right next to the magic marker you've apparently been doing your eyebrows with. Pick a category. What in the... I can't read this. Anagram question... Let's see if you can make sense of this category. Pile on, gone wrong. Right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth 10 grand. When you know what the real answer is, buzz in and start typing. And do it fast, because I'll be taking away some cash every couple of seconds. And remember, spelling counts. All right, dude, unscramble this anagram and tell me what summertime brand name this is. Creep on top. You want to bet it's a brand of sunscreen lotion? Let's see what you got. Start. <laughs> Copper Tone. Probably the only major brand with a logo featuring bad touch by a dog. How about picking a category? Up next, the World Cup runneth over. We're talking six grand here, so pay attention. Think fast, here it comes. If soccer's World Cup were actually a protective cup the size of the earth, what would be the approximate length of the package nestled inside? 8,000 miles, 25,000 miles, 196,000 miles, or 93 million miles? Oops, no time left. Here's the one you didn't pick. The Earth's diameter is about 8,000 miles, so you gotta figure the protected item would be about that big. And yeah, that could make me look good in a Speedo, too. Go ahead and pick one of these. You are about to embark upon the attack. Pay attention to the items I show you. When you see a correct match, buzz in and I'll give you some money. If you're wrong, I'll take away some money. Every time you're wrong. And try to remember. Remember the clue. Your match better fit this clue. Cartoon dogs, a rare breed. Now stop licking yourself and pay attention.
like a million. Let's see how you jacked up your score. There it is. Hey, way to go. Who knew that playing with yourself could be so rewarding? You see, this is how those dirty, bad, filthy habits start. Now, lean back, close your eyes, and say... You don't know Jack! Are Santa's claws in your kids tonight? He's the world's most beloved children's singer and has sold more than 10.